Well, I have once again offended the dystopian elites who want to shove you into squalor and force you to eat bugs. This time, the outrage stems from a report by a climate organization called the C40 Cities Climate Leadership Group. Now, as always, I want you to follow the money. Well, the C40, the money trail, leads to billionaire Michael Bloomberg. Hmm. Michael r- ran for president in 2020. Uh, How'd that go? Did he win? Nah, no, nobody really even knows. I. Pff, really forgettable. Uh, the most forgettable billion dollars ever spent. It really is. Now, into, until Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. Now, funny enough, uh, Bloomberg makes his money with Bloomberg News, which is the liberal hack news source. The organization um, includes about 100 cities throughout the world uh, with 14 cities in America who plan to help you give up meat, cars, and freedom. By the year, take a guess. Uh, 2050? No. 2030? 2030. Mm. Okay. So the cities are Austin, Boston, Chicago, Houston. Uh, Los Angeles, Miami, New Orleans, New York City, Philadelphia, Phoenix, Portland, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., and Seattle. What do all those things have in common besides cities that I would run for my life from? Well, they're the ones that want to ban meat. And as if that isn't enough, the C40 has an ambitious target. Their words, not mine. Ambitious target to achieve some... Majorly authoritarian goals, and the goals demand that C40 cities have zero kilograms of meat consumption by everybody in their town. Zero kilograms of dairy consumption. Three new clothing items per year per person. I love that. Zero private vehicles owned. And... A populace that only gets one short-haul return flight every three years per person. Now, that is great. Who doesn't want to live in that world? Mm, <clears throat> paradise. Besides me. <clears throat> the report is titled, uh, is titled, The Future of Urban Consumption in a Point, uh, Sorry, in a 1.5 Celsius World. It was published in 2019, and it has recently made a... Reemergence. Now, if the media did their job, this would be a pretty massive story, wouldn't you think? Michael Bloomberg funding an organization that wants to take all cars, all meat, reduce people to buying only three pairs of clothing, and one short haul flight every three years. You'd think that would be a major story, but it's not. Because there's another organization out there funded by the left call, called AFP Fact Check. Fact Check. Now, it originated uh, from a French newspaper, but its fact checkers are the same people who appear in all of the fact checking organizations with jobs at all of the mainstream outlets. So the AFP Fact Check compl- uh, uh, claims that when I talked about this a while back, they said, quote, a video from Glenn Beck, an American conservative commentator, claims a proposal backed by the World Economic Forum would limit meat and dairy in smart cities by 2030. This is false. The document cited as evidence is an independent climate analysis that makes no specific policy recommendation. Oh, right, right. Now, the actual fact checker here is as leftist as you would expect. He's another another example of fact checking as a new kind of digital activism. At this point, if an article or a monologue is fact checked, that usually means there are some inconvenient facts in it. So it's no surprise that the fact checker is the same guy who had to publicly apologize for botching a fact check with USA Today in 2021. He has connections to Pointer, fact check, the Pointer Institute, 
Hmm. Which I've talked about before. Part of a network of shell companies designed to fact check the exact companies that they work for. While also slandering any site, any show, any network that challenges the propaganda. A recent article by The Federalist uh, uncovered the truth, in which we already knew. The fact check was written deceptively. Now, I know that comes as something hard to believe, but it's true. The evidence... It quotes from the AFP fact check includes a paragraph from the original The Future of Urban Consumption in a 1.5 degree Celsius World Report. And it reads, this report does not advocate for the wholesale adoption of these more ambitious targets in C40 cities. Rather, they are included to provide a set of reference points that cities and other actors can reflect on when considering different emission reduction alternatives and long-term urban visions. Now, if you poke around just a little closer, you realize that this paragraph is only included in the report for liability purposes. It performs one of the left's favorite activities, manipulating the meaning of words as a way to avoid any kind of responsibility. Now, we know why they want to avoid um, any kind of responsibility because what they're proposing is totalitarianism and they're legalistic about it. They might just succeed, but that's how authoritarians operate. So look at what's already happening in London right now. They have ultra low emission zones. It's a surveillance system that covers all 32 of London's boroughs, encapsulating 5 million people aimed at eradicating 20 to 40,000 vehicles. No surprise, the World Economic Forum absolutely loves London's authoritarian new approach. They even published an article in March celebrating the fact that London's new emission zone has reduced pollution levels by more than a quarter. But surely, surely that will never happen here. Right? <laughs> 